Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala mabad ayya al-habita fillah One of the most useful things that we can study is that which is going to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which is going to remind, of, remind us of Him remind us of our duties to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and help us uh, to be better slaves of His tabarak wa ta'ala and as a part of usefulness, I thought it would be beneficial. I came across a very beneficial treatise uh, that is uh, part of Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah's works, Rahmatullah Alayhi, Rahmatan Wasiyah, that one of the brothers, uh, Talib bin Tyson, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, that he translated and it's incredibly beneficial. And it's entitled, Obstacles That Prevent One From Making, Re uh, making Repentance. Obstacles That Prevent One From Making repentance and in this regard I think we will read from it and then we will make ta'liqat where necessary you know bring some other benefits that we will uh, try to bring from the ulama and from our studies bi'idnillah ta'ala and may Allah bless with tawfiq he began by saying our business is information knowledge and wisdom people read books for these reasons if you only have information and knowledge about one human being in your life Knowing about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is one is the most beneficial. Everything he did was beneficial. Everything he said was beneficial. Everything he showed his companions and the rest of the world was beneficial. No one's life was studied closer and more in detail than his sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He led his worship of Allah to be the subject of study. He lived and showed us how to live how to deal with each other, how to deal with our neighbors, how to deal with our husbands and wives, how to have a relationship with our Creator. The salvation of one's soul is the most important thing in a Muslim's life. Thus evil is concealed within the soul and it necessitates actions of evil. If Allah lets a servant have his own way with his soul, he will perish at the evil of his own soul and evil actions that it sanctions. If Allah, on the other hand, grants a servant success and assists him, he will deliver him from this all. Calling oneself to account is one of two types. A type that occurs before the action and a type that occurs after the action. As for the first type, it is to take a stance when one first has an intention and desire and not to embark upon that action. Meaning that before you do an action of sinfulness, you're aware of it and you decide not to fall into that sin, not to do that sin. For example, someone who wishes to commit zina and they have this intention to go to so-and-so's house and to perform this vile act. And may Allah protect us from it. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And because they have the intention and desire, then they stop and they take account of themselves and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they leave it and do not go to that action. This is the first type that he's talking about. Then he says, and as for the second type, which is the take account of one soul after the action, Allah says in the Holy Quran, indeed he succeeds who purifies his soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflaha man zakaha. Indeed he succeeds who purifies. Means the one who purifies them, their soul. The great Qur'an translator, At-Tabari, mentions in his tafsir regarding this beautiful ayat, Allah the Most High says that indeed he succeeds who purifies his soul. So he greatly purifies his soul from kufr and disobedience and rectifies it through righteous actions. Also, Ibn al-Qayyim relates that Hassan al-Basri said, he succeeds who purifies his soul by rectifying it and directing it towards obedience to Allah. And he fails who ruins it and directs it towards disobedience of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, and indeed he fails who corrupts, who corrupts it, meaning his soul. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and indeed he fails who corrupts it, corrupts his own soul. So the one who's successful is who? is the one who purifies their soul. And the one who is unsuccessful, who fails, who is khasara, is the one who corrupts themselves by following their vain desires. 
Also, a Tabari mentions, uh, then relates from Mujahid who said regarding this ayah means misguided it, meaning the person who misguided themselves. Then he relates that Qatada said about this ayah, meaning, and it caused it to sin. So the person who's inclined towards sin and the person who indulges in sin. Furthermore, our beloved Prophet used to teach his companions the khutbat al hajjah the speech of, uh, of need, all praises, alhamdulillah, uh, all praises for Allah. We praise him, seek his aid and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our own soul and wickedness of our actions. In alhamdulillah, nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasafiru wa na'udhu billah min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina min yahdi Allah wa muhtad wa min yudlil fala hadi Allah. So this is the khutbat al-hajjah or part of the khutbat al-hajjah and as it began with the praise of Allah, all praises for Allah, we praise him, seek his aid and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our souls and wickedness of our actions. So that's seeking refuge and uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of yourself. At the same time, recognizing that you you have evil inclinations and the shaitan's going to whisper to you and you're going to be inclined towards sinfulness. We're weak. We're frail as human beings. At the same time, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we make his saghfar and we seek refuge in him to help us, to assist us, to protect us from the evils of our own souls and the wickedness of our actions. Those wicked desires that we act upon, we seek refuge in Allah as a form of protection to protect us from that. And we seek forgiveness from him and we praise him. This is the sifat of the mu'min. And this is what the Prophet used to teach his companions. And we'll stop there and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And until the next sitting, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.